Democracy Now! broadcasting live from COP21, where representatives from nearly 200 nations are in the final stretches of negotiations aimed at reaching an accord to avoid the most catastrophic impacts of climate change. Our next guest has spent the last two decades tracking global warming from one of the front lines of climate change, Greenland's ice sheets. From 2008 to 2012, Jason Box was the lead author of the Greenland section of NOAA's annual climate change report. That's the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration's annual climate change report. In 2012, he was one of the first scientists to warn there would be surface melting across the entirety of Greenland within a decade. A prediction that drew scorn from many in the scientific community until the melting began only a few months later. Jason Box has also participated in protests against climate change, including the 2011 mass protest at the White House. His most recent piece for The New Yorker magazine, co-authored with Naomi Klein, is headlined, Why a Climate Deal is the Best Hope for Peace. Earlier this year, Esquire ran a profile of Jason Box, headlined, When the End of Human Civilization is Your Day Job. Jason Box, welcome to Democracy Now! Thanks. So, Talk about Greenland and what's happening and why people um, should care around the world. Well, Greenland ice and ice around the world are really good indicators of climate change. That and Arctic climate change is proceeding at about twice the rate of the lower latitudes. The impacts uh, are important globally, even though this is a remote place. We not only sea level rise, which uh, NASA confirmed one meter of sea level rise is locked in by the end of the century, and we can't rule out more than that. Uh, we don't yet have the models that have specific processes uh, that we know that are happening in the field from, from our observations. That they're not encoded in the climate models, so we have to look into the past. And what we, what we see is the last time that atmospheric CO2 was at 400 parts per million, global sea level was at least six meters higher. So we urgently need to reduce emissions, but also somehow draw down atmospheric carbon. And one great natural technology to do that is in the form of trees and grasses and to restore uh, soil carbon stores. Uh, that's a, a known kind of technology, natural technology, that, that we need to urgently pursue now. So how did you end up first going to Greenland? And explain how, what it looks like as the ice sheet melts. We selected Greenland as a climate laboratory because we can conduct experiments uh, and, and monitor over a large scale and compare our ground measurements with satellite and climate models. So we're, we're running uh, a network of measurements, and there, it's now in going b beyond 20 years. And so while spending time in Greenland, we see numerous uh, physical things happening that, that are not yet in the models. For example, uh, the snow line on the ice sheet is rising, and below the snow line is a dark, bare ice area. It, that absorbs a lot more sunlight during these 24-hour uh, sunlit days. That's one multiplying factor. Another is increasing rainfall on the Greenland ice sheet. Um, that darkens the surface. Uh, warming is bringing more rainfall, uh, more lubrication to the flow of the ice sheet. Uh, we observe lakes forming higher on the inland ice. We observe uh, a darkening of the bare ice area that's due to uh, microbial blooms. Then wildfire increasing in, in the Arctic is also something that we're tracking through a, a crowdfunded activity called the, the Dark Snow Project at darksnow.org. And, and so there's numerous multiplying factors that, that we're finding that just aren't in the climate models yet. What is Jakobs Harm? Uh, the Jakobs Harm Glacier is the world's fastest continuously flowing glacier. It used to have an ice shelf in front of it uh, when I started working in Greenland. And that area, that ice shelf, more than one and a half times uh, the size of Manhattan Island, that ice shelf uh, disintegrated. We didn't recognize uh, the Jakobshavn Glacier in the year 2003. Uh, the, the landscape had, had transformed. And so this world's fastest glacier has uh, more than doubled in speed. And, and it, so it's decanting uh, the Greenland ice sheet. And, and it's not alone. There, there are dozens of other uh, marine terminating glaciers like this. 
consequently, the Greenland sea level contribution has more than doubled in the last 20 years. And so if we start thinking in doubling times, Greenland's contribution is on the order of 12 to 14 year doubling times. That delivers uh, uh, globally from other land ice masses, including Antarctica, the, the bigger ice sheet, uh, more than a meter of sea level rise by the end of this century. So what has to be done, and do you feel what's happening at COP21, the 1.5 degrees Celsius or 2.7 degree Fahrenheit target, albeit voluntary target, is important? Well, it's nice to have those aspirations, and it raises hope, that's for sure. But the numbers that the different countries brought, um, the U.S. and Canada, for example, they are not consistent with these one and a half degree or even two degree targets. So this is like goodwill rhetoric. It, it, it makes us feel good, but it, it without a, a binding uh, mechanism with teeth, a legally binding mechanism, they can say whatever numbers they want and make us feel good. But again, the emissions reduction scenarios that, that are on the table from the United States and, and Canada are fall far short of, of hitting that or going through that temperature target. So really what we need to be talking about is um, um, you know, that atmospheric carbon level that we can tolerate. And unfortunately, it's too high now. So we, the conversation, the missing conversation is also about atmospheric drawdown of carbon. And that's why I bring up trees and grasslands and, and restoring uh, uh, growing parts of our planet. We've lost uh, one third of arable land on, on our planet in the last 50 years. We need to start reversing that. And we can bring humidification to, back to uh, the Mediterranean. The Roman Empire began deforesting the Mediterranean you know, long ago. And, and that desertification trend is behind the drought. And we can actually begin reversing that. And, and it actually, besides bringing moisture back to some of these places and, and sequestering carbon, it also gives people hope. And it can be a gesture of peace that, that we can offer ar around the world. Hi, I'm Amy Goodman. I want to thank you for tuning in to Democracy Now! We are so grateful to our fans and followers for being a part of the daily conversation. By choosing a news source that's committed to the truth, you're carrying the message of independent media, reaching hundreds of thousands of people every day. In these times of war and elections, we need a media not sponsored by corporations that profit from war, but a media that's truly independent, funded by you. Democracy Now! is not paid for by the weapons manufacturers, the insurance industry or the oil, gas, coal or nuclear companies. We don't take advertising or corporate underwriting dollars. That means we rely on your donations to make our daily independent news hour possible. We need your support today to keep bringing you the hard-hitting, in-depth reporting you've come to expect five days a week. Visit democracynow.org, or you can call 888-999-3877. That's 888-999-3877 to make your holiday gift to Democracy Now! today. Thanks so much for sharing Democracy Now! stories all year long.